welcome. We are going to explore the motivation, foundation, and overview of differential geometric algebra, which can be used as a foundation for aerospace engineering. It is not essential for you to follow along with all the notational details in this presentation. The main goal is to provide an overview of what to expect when using differential geometric algebra as a universal foundation. Why is geometric algebra fundamentally important? It provides a unified foundation for complex numbers, which is a flatland geometry, quaternions, a 3D rotation, linear algebra and bilinear, exterior forms algebra, which is a multilinear determinant generalization, quantum logic lattice, differential geometry, conformal and projection, and group representation. They provide a algebraic unification for geometry and mathematical physics. Now, what do all these things have in common? Geometric algebra provides generalizations of the right-hand rule to higher dimensional orientations. Now, the most prominent example we can think of is the cross product in three dimensions, which is a, we have a parallelotope volume, which is constructed from two vectors into a bivector and its complement vector space. Geometric algebra provides the most natural, common, unifying language for everything. What are the applications of geometric algebra? It has the potential to impact countless engineering and scientific computing applications, multidisciplinary design optimization, finite element method, boundary element method, electric circuit models, wave scattering, space-time projective and geometry and relativity, computer graphics, photogrammetry, visualization, fluid mechanics, aeroacoustics, multi-layer optics, trajectory optimization, flight dynamics, gravitational modeling, gauge theory, transfer functions, optimization and control, spin groups and automatic differentiation, neural networks, number theory and probability. To start with, we have a tensor basis of vectors, differentials, covectors and functions. And we can encode our choice of these using a byte encoded tuple, which we name a tensor bundle. The tensor bundle encoding is an implementation choice. And usually we want to at least have a quadratic form in the form of a metric tensor. The motivation behind geometric algebra is a compact subspace algebra notation. All the subspaces represent an alternative basis with a more compact notation than matrices. As an example, in three dimensions, we'd rather not represent a unit scalar with a full matrix representation, or we'd rather not represent a unit vector with a full column vector representation, and we'd rather not represent a unit bivector plane with a full matrix representation. And we'd rather not represent a tri-vector volume with a matrix determinant representation. For quaternions, we use a subspace index notation. We need to make sure that the product of i, j, and k equals negative one. And we prefer not to use a matrix representation to calculate this product. And so we only rely on the index combinatorics of the tensor basis by using the geometric product. The geometric product is a generalization of the standard multiplication of complex numbers and quaternions. It works by keeping track of the orientation of the indices and their canceling in the associative and distributive multiplication of the indices. The, this immediately gives rise to a symmetrization and anti-symmetrization projections, which is just simply, it's an averaging operation over all the permutations that the product can be. 
and this is either a symmetric or anti-symmetric. Grassmann's idea for the exterior product was that if you took the product of two vectors and you interchanged the order of the vectors, the sign would change. And this would have the implication that a vector, the product with itself, would have to be zero because it would have to equal its negative. And this concept can be generalized to any number of vectors. And it turns out that the determinant is actually a special case of this operation. And so this exterior product is a fundamental operation, which is the foundation of linear algebra and determinants. And it is essentially based on the anti-symmetrization that Grassmann proposed. And this operation is associative and distributive over the tensor basis addition. And additionally, we have the Leibniz differentials, which are der derivation, and these are characterized by symmetrization in contrast to the exterior product. And now we introduce the Hodge complement, which is a specially oriented version of the complement operation, which takes a grade P exterior product to its complement space. And we denote this by the star operation, and which is calculated by taking the reverse of the orientation and times the pseudo scalar of that tangent bundle. And so we get a grade n minus p complement space. And this complement operation combined with the exterior product can result in another product called the regressive product. And combined, these three operations are the ortho complementary propositional lattice and quantum logic which satisfies the, the Morgan's law. Additionally, we can construct a boundary operation from these other operations. And this satisfies the Poincaré lemma, which means that the boundary of a boundary is zero. Given this and the exterior differential, which is the curl, we can observe that this is nothing but the geometric product and the sum of the exterior differential and the boundary is the Dirac operator. Another very interesting and exciting aspect of geometric algebra is the simplification of Maxwell's equation into a single wave equation. We start by defining a Faraday bivector which is a sum of a uh, electric field and the complementary magnetic field components. And we observe that this is equal to dA, where A is a vector potential, the, and D is the exterior differential. Now, if we take observe the Gauss's law and the Faraday's law, the Ampere's law, and compare it with the Faraday bivector, we observe that they can satisfy the same conditions when written in a certain way. And what we find then is actually that Maxwell's equation is simplified to a single space-time wave equation of the vector potential and the source term. In order to get the conformal geometric algebra light cone, we combine the positive and negative metric to create null vectors. This is done by taking the sum and the difference of the bases, and they have a measure of zero. Now, if we take the bivector of these, this is called the Minkowski plane, and it behaves slightly differently under the geometric product with the null vectors. It is a hyperbolic rotation which we'll see later. And if we combine this with the differential operators, we can find a null Laplacian. In geometric algebra, we have a sandwich outer morphism here represented by the O slash symbol. 
This in a special case is when the we are sandwiching a vector is it's actually a reflection by a hyperplane. And this leads to the theorem of Carton Diodon of the rotoflexion decomposition. And it says that every isometry is a composite of at most k reflections, which can be observed in terms of the sandwich outer morphism. Let's consider the differential equation of the sandwich outer morphism with the solution of the exponential function with the Lie group parameter. For the special case of a normalized omega which squares to a scalar, we have written the explicit solution of the exponentials, which is a double covering in the plane. However, there are more general solutions which we're going to observe visually. First visual example, we have the imaginary unit of the complex plane as an outer morphism with the exponential and we can observe that different rotations of the exponential provide a different vector field. And on the right side, we have also the Minkowski plane, which is a hyperbolic rotation instead of the standard one of the complex imaginary unit. Now here we observe the outer morphism of a submanifold projection in the higher dimensional space. Here we see a flow embedded in a three dimensional space which is projected from a four dimensional sphere rotation. For the same exponential, we have different projections that take the four dimensional rotation back into a three dimensional space. With this notation, it is simple to do a vector field parameter modulization, modulation with different combinations of epicycling, for example. Uh, we observe that we can find different kinds of trajectories. All the plots I have just shown can be reproduced with my open source software, Grassman, combined with the Mackie visualization in the Julia language. and all, all of the plots can be generated with this code right here. The universal exterior algebra foundation of Grassmann is used to devise an expressive and performance-oriented language for discrete differential geometric algebra with Grassmann elements. This is based on the abstract tangent vector space type operation at compile time. This builds a differential geometric algebra on a discrete manifold. Thanks to the Julia language multiple dispatch, there's a polymorphism based on the tensor algebra abstract type system. It is insightful to view multivectors as weighted hypergraph representations. For example, in the seven-dimensional vector space, the triangle hyperedge complement is a tetrahedron points P0, P1, and P2, which can be thought of as a triangle in a plane. In the following example, we generalize the single triangle example to a set of triangles by extending the number of points. This is a Grassmann element mesh bundle example for the icosahedron with 12 points, which are obtained from the cyclic permutation of 0, 1, and the golden ratio, of which there are different signed variants. Together, these points provide the convex hull of the icosahedron of which we take the boundary tri-vector. The bi-vector volumes correspond to each triangle and they have a complement which is a surface normal. 
Each of the green arrows represents a triangle of surface normal, while the red arrows are the node quadrature interpolation obtained from the degree weighted incidence relation of the surface tri-vector. Incidence relations can be applied using a matrix-free representation or a matrix representation. Given a dyadic tensor product equation in which we want to solve for x, we can do so explicitly. This means that using only exterior products, we can efficiently solve the linear system by allocating an ascending exterior product and a descending exterior product, and then taking the exterior products of them with p0. This was found to be very efficient in the Julia language because the exterior products are statically allocated. Similarly, to determine whether a point P0 is contained inside of the simplex, it is sufficient to check the orientation of all the same exterior products as was allocated above. While the inverse requires allocating the full dyadic result, all the same exterior products can be used in all three of these calculations. And of course, the last one can be used to co obtain the hat gradient of the simplex in any dimension by only using exterior products. Here we have an example of how the Poisson equation, the transport and the streamlined diffusion can be solved in any dimension using a unified syntax approach represents a way you can entirely rely on using Grassmann exterior algebra at the local element level while constructing a large matrix linear representation on the global assembly. Here we have a few examples of finite element calculations uh, visualized with Mackey in the Julia language using the Grassmann algebra. The electromagnetic wave scattering was interpolated from Nedelic edges and the scalar and the full potential calculations were done on meshes of different dimension uh, and due to the Grassmann algebra foundation we can easily gener generalize the problems for one dimensional or two dimensional or higher dimensional mesh using Grassmann as a foundation. Grassmann algebra is a unifying mathematical foundation. It helps improve efficiency of multidisciplinary research using geometric tensor calculus by relying on universal mathematical principles, which include anti-symmetric tensor products and geometric algebra, rotational algebras and Lie bivector groups with the exponential, conformal geometric algebra with the Minkowski plane, mixed symmetry algebra with Leibniz automatic differentiation, Hodge and Dirac cohomology with differential and contraction, Betty numbers and the Euler characteristic, Dirac and Clifford product and the Hodge Laplacian, and now we have mesh compatibility that allows import from various other packages, including geometry basics, mini Q hole, triangulate, tet gen. MATLAB. What we see is that inevitably we're going to improve the efficiency of multidisciplinary research using differential geometric algebra by relying on universal mathematical principles. Then we'll transform superficial knowledge into deeper understanding. We'll have unified foundations for many different subdisciplines. 
which are widely applicable to geometry and mathematical physics. The software tooling will help overcome present challenges. It's not yet standardized or taught in schools and universities. It's not yet used for industrial engineering science unification. But the open source Grassman.jl software enables ascending future steps can, to teach geometric algebra in schools and universities, use it in research and development practices, and deploy it in maybe some industrial applications. Geometric algebra is the future of unifying math and engineering pipelines. These are some of my references for geometric algebra and differential geometry. And I'll also be releasing more notes and tutorials in the future.